Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about my farming strategy to hit level 100 on my Righteous Fire Inquisitor, uh, but also uh, some slight adjustments we have made yet again to the character. Now remember that these adjustments that I have made are pretty much just like more expensive variant upgrades, so they have not really been included in the League Starter POB, but you can find them on my YouTube or on my live stream. Um, so just really fast to recap and go over what I'm referring to. Um, you can see over here about six days ago, we made the Aegis Aurora swap, which you can see a YouTube video detailing that along with a POB. And then shortly after that, we did the Aegis Melding swap, which has the exact same thing. Uh, and then this one will have the third variant, which is basically forcing in a double cluster at the expense of your currency. Um, but we're not going to talk about that right now. First, we're going to talk about the farming strat. So... Um, first off, I want to state that this farming strat is not like, not necessarily a low investment farming strat. I mean, I guess it's sort of is low investment, but for the most part, it does require gear, which is why I say it's not low investment. So first off, you are going to want to have four watchstones on your atlas. And again, this is more of my farming strat, not necessarily that I'm telling you to do it or it's better than someone else's, right? This is just quite literally what I did. Um, so... Uh, next step, I like to roll my watchstones with density, and this is pretty much irrelevant. No matter what strategy I'm doing, I want density because I'm a mapper. So step one, get density. So that's density because it says adds X amount of monsters. I don't care about invasion boss. Um, oh, sacred grove. Okay, whenever you get something that's worth money, which I know for newer players, it's going to be hard to understand that. Um, but whenever you get something that's worth anything, you can always just compass it and save it for later. So Gilded Scarab is also worth something. Um, Grave Robber. Okay, six additional packs of mobs that convert. That was pretty unlucky. But we got Sacred Grove, so that pays it off. Uh, and then here I'm just going to roll, and that is six packs of monsters. Good. So now I'm going to just stash this stuff back. And then you can see here, this is one section that I buy ahead of time. This is my Mysterious Harbinger. It just basically brings value to running Harbinger. Uh, one thing that's important, though, is based off market economy, um, this strategy may not be as good, obviously, if a lot of people are using similar scarabs. But as an example, I use Gilded Cartographer to help over-sustain, and then I can actually sell my extra. A lot of players are having issues with map sustain this league, so Cartography Scarab actually brings a lot of income. Rusted Elder is just for density and rare chance that, like, you know, the really good item level, um, like 85 plus um, T or like perfect armor bases for RF, basically. TLDR, if you get like a pure armor helmet uh, that's elder base, that's like really high tier, it's it's it could potentially be worth a bit. Then divination card, because we are running the map for uh, mage blood along with some other cards. And then I run Harby just to complement my Atlas. So let's talk about my Atlas. Here you go. This can be mixed around depending on what you want to do. For example, you if your gear is not as high, you could probably drop Beyond and go Abyss instead. Uh, Abyss is a lot more tamed. Beyond is really the big gearing threshold. Same with Delirium. Um, you could also make way more money with my strategy if you decided to buy Delirium Sextants. I just have no interest in doing that. That's, I don't know, that's just too much for me. Um, but yeah, so this is pretty much the Atlas. It's the exact same Atlas command for my stream. I think I just have like these four nodes out and these four nodes in wherever the other delirium nodes are i think here yeah just this okay uh right so again cardo elder div and harby and then i personally like to run domination for shrines adds good density um again there may be some other options instead but domination is just what i've been running and i choose to do searing exarch only because um it's more money than running eater that's it Right, um, now this character is not explode, and if you want it to map clear faster, you would definitely want to grab like the AoE over here by Explosive Impact and the AoE by Amplify, but our next character is going to be basically made for that, so that doesn't really matter. All right, I'm going to hit this Delirium, and the game is probably going to freeze for a bit, so here we go. And then we just put on Abiscos for a quick Rampage and swap off.
I would probably say some of like the entry level requirements to farming content like this on Righteous Fire. And again, these are based off the current market prices, so it will change based off of different things. Aegis Aurora is probably not mandatory, but really recommended if you don't want to die. So Aegis Aurora itself is like seven exalts, so that puts that kind of at a minimum. Again, you could absolutely farm this content without an Aegis. I probably would not try to do tier 16 Delirium Sentinel though, because it's kind of rippy. Um, this character is running some thick defensive layers right now, which is why we're able to do this. There's, you definitely do not need Melding of the Flesh to farm this content, but you definitely may occasionally die without Melding of the Flesh. So the number one thing is uh, you definitely want an Aegis Aurora or some form of very good recovery shield. Um, obviously, you're going to want your six link. You're going to want your Legacy of Fury. And then it's time to stack damage. So for number comparisons, when I have Rampage on, I guess I don't really have Rampage right now, but I have 1.2 million damage on my Righteous Fire on Tooltip. You could easily farm just regular t16 with like 400k tooltip right it's just because this is delirium beyond with the occasional uh sentinel where you want more damage oh there's one crimson temple Tabula. Thanks, GG. That's so kind of you. Now, the reason I say that, like, buying the Delirium Sextant wouldn't be worth it is because if you clear fast enough, you can pretty much clear 95% of the map and then get to the boss before your delirium expires, which means you are guaranteed to get usually like 55 plus splinters, but it does depend on, I guess, a number of factors. There's like 50. And that is pretty much our map. Right. So let's talk about some changes on what I did and why I did them. So, uh, First step is I wanted to get more damage to be able to comfortably farm the content I just showed. Um, one problem I was having is when I would proc Delirium, the combination of Delirium, Sentinel, Arc Nemesis, and Beyond was just making some monsters take an unethical amount of time, and it just felt really weird, right? So basically, what I did here is, if you guys remember... In the original build, we pathed this way, and this is before Aegis. After Aegis, we dropped this section, started pathing this way, right? This way here to grab our max res. So we have made some adjustments. Now, the number one thing I'm going to address right now, because it's the thing I get asked the most on, is the mana reservation. So we dropped this whole cluster, but our auras are still the exact same. Right, we're still running Banner, Determination, Malevolence, Purity, and Tempest Shield. So the, the way we acquired our auras back is through the following. There's three options. So you can run A, Pure Guile, which gives you Dex and Purity of uh, Ice Mana Reservation. B, I forgot the names of them. It might be called Uncompromising. It's basically Determination Mana Reservation Efficiency. Um, and I think it's 20% reduced Stun Threshold or other way around. 20%, yeah, anyway, you get it. And the third one is, I think it's like 11% Chaos Resist with Malevolence Mana Reservation Efficiency. You need one of those three, and you need to make sure the base is Reservation Efficiency. You don't have to have uh, a three-pointer. So if you look, this is a two-pointer. So I have one point in Reservation and then one point here. You could go with a two-pointer if you want a little bit of extra MP, 
uh, or you just feel like you screwed up somewhere, this will kind of like help save you. But this is pretty much mandatory. If you don't have this, you will not have the uh, aura reservation. Now, um, talking about the cluster. So I'm per personally running Sadist and Prismatic Heart uh, on both of my clusters. Prismatic Heart helps massively with gearing for melding of the flesh by giving you all res. Sadist is interesting because um, my Tempest Shield ignites because I have flat fire on it, so you can see it. And when I'm mapping, I'm getting hit quite a bit. So it frequently, it, it's always uh, basically um, igniting. Then at the same time, it's always going to shock as well, unless you're running like the map mod. And even then, it's just bouncing so many different times. The only thing I don't know of is the chill. I'm not sure if the chilled ground I create from Frost Blink counts as me chilling. That's the only thing I need to figure out for Sadist. Yeah, anyway, that's pretty much what I'm running there. And that has disorienting display, which pushes these two in the back. So as for my mediums, I went with a flow of life and a flow of life. And the reason for two flows of life is they give 0.6% life per second and 4% max life. I did lose life dropping, uh, for example, like Heart of the Warrior. And I do lose regeneration dropping Warrior's Blood. So the I do get a little bit of regeneration back via the flows of life. Um, then I have a Smoking Remains, which is just straight up 35% increased damage. And then I have another Smoking Remains for a 35% increased damage. Then moving over here, we just basically get another jewel. So Fire Multi... Uh, Actually, we don't get another jewel because we replace this jewel for right here. But then we also come down here and we get Pure Guile. Now, after doing this, you still have like five points left. So there is still one big thing to address. You lose Corrupted Blood Immunity and... Um, I think you lose... I lost Chaos Resist. I forgot exactly what... Oh, I switched my chest piece. That's a different story. Never mind. Uh, right. So what I did just for a quick fix... It's kind of weird because my character is worth like over 100 exalt and this is kind of scuffed. But a quick fix is just coming down here and grabbing Asylum Wheel. So Asylum basically put me at Chaos Cap so I didn't have to change my gear anymore. And you can get Corrupted Blood Immune from here so I didn't have to look for a Jewel. So just, you know, this is more of like a cozy feeling, but definitely don't have to take this by any means. Uh, this character will most likely be turned into my bosser um, while I map on my new character that I'll be making. We're going to be making an Explode Righteous Fire build uh, as our next character. So I already have some gear saved up for it. Um, basically, we're going to use an Explode Chest uh, with an Explode Scepter. And um, this one's kind of shit, but we're just going to multi-mod it. But yeah, that's going to be for another video. Uh, anyway, that's pretty much what I wanted to touch up you guys with, but on, I, I said that wrong, um, just to kind of cover what we did on this character, there you go, uh, a lot of these deaths were due to just like having fun, I'm sure you watch in like the stream clips and stuff, but very smooth experience to level 100, even though they removed Beyond from the map device, I had a lot of fun, um, still having a lot of fun, and definitely very excited to make the next explode character well i guess this character is not explode but the next character which will be explode so anyway um that's pretty much about it so i hope you guys had a wonderful time hope you guys enjoyed yourselves if you did don't forget to like share and subscribe and of course if you have any questions on righteous fire feel free to drop them down below or go search them on the website slash wiki see you guys all tomorrow have a good one